Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday. What is it? <laughs> July 25th today. And I wanted to give you guys a tour again because we haven't, sh I haven't showed the permaculture ish edge in a while. So I wanted to give you a tour of that. So, and hopefully, again, I never know where my image is. So hopefully, you're seeing what I'm talking about. So this is our chrysanthemums again, our tea chrysanthemums. There is some comfrey in there as well. Um, this is true hyssop, but we had a little bit of rain and honestly it wasn't that much. We could use some more again, um, but it does not like the, it doesn't like wet conditions. I guess because we're mostly clay, it, uh, it doesn't like it. So it's not looking really good. Hopefully it comes back. I don't know if I should put some sand under it or something to help with the drainage. In any case, uh, I did plant some stuff in this bare spot, but because I put a little of peat, peat moss here, the rabbits have made beds out of them and crushed the plants that I've had there. So we've been really hit by the uh, bunnies and rabbits and voles this year to the extent that they've eating a lot of things that they never did in the past. I've got milkweed, it's beyond its uh, flowering stage here. Uh, this is a Rosa Sharon. That was there when I got the house. Well, it apparently it kept getting mowed down, but when we let it go, it came back. So, um, some fennel, and this is our mulberry tree, one of them. And this is, we were lucky enough to get some wood chips from a neighbor who had her, her trees cut. So, this is Echinacea, purpurea. And I'm going back here a little bit. Um, this is our passion flower, one of them. Okay, this is St. John's wort. And... I do have a little milkweed coming up. Some milkweed. I hope you can see it. Although the rabbits keep eating that. And this little cactus here, um, I, actually it might be the deer that's eating it. This little cactus here keeps getting eaten um, by something as well. So we've got... Um, okay. Got a little bit of um, bee balm here. There actually is some yarrow in there somewhere as well. So my white blackberries did not do well. So we didn't get any fruit from them. They got some kind of a disease. I really need to pull them up. And I don't really want to. It may just be because it's an old variety uh, heritage, heritage type of raspberry and maybe it's not suited for the humid south. Apparently it was created by John Burbank in California. So uh, it didn't do well at all. And so I'm gonna pull it up. I just haven't done it yet because it's got thorns. So I really need to get some heavy gloves to do that. Um, so I'm gonna take a quick little turn here so you can see the grapes. So these are our um, muscadine grapes. And it looks like we've got fruit. But I hate to get, um, I can't see the, hopefully they're in the picture there. Um, hopefully we'll get to eat them this year. Last year we didn't cover them. And right as they became ripe overnight, the deer came and ate pretty much every last, there was a handful left, but pretty much they've eaten, they ate them all. Anyway, so right now it looks like we're going to get some. We'll see what happens. I am going to try to cover them the best we can. Um, now we do have really hit also by Japanese beetles. They've been tearing them up too. Okay. This is a mother, mother wart here. I have a uh, roselle hibiscus I put there. Of course that'll be annual here unfortunately. We just got done with blueberries. And we actually, out of two plants, we got quite a few plates of blueberries. There's still a few on there that we've left for nature. If you can see, there's still some blueberries. 
We left them. Those are for nature's. We got our part and got to give them a little bit. Let me give nature a little bit. So we left some on there. Um, so here are the kiwis and the, the heat and dryness really getting to them. Um, this is the best looking one and see that they're, we still have the kiwis. They're not ripe yet. I hope it's in the picture. Uh, I'll show you some more. The last kiwi plant I have, the very far end, which I'm going to show you in a minute, has been hit the most by the Japanese beetles and I guess the weather, probably the voles too. Those are the berries. Uh, there's a lot of bowl activity over here. So, and I just hope that it recovers. See, they're getting kind of eat up by the Japanese beetles and by the weather. Um, here's a anise hyssop or agastache and so all the bees love that so much as you can see tons of bees okay so that is most of our oh more of the anise hyssop and agastache and we have some stinging nettle over here too so in terms of the beds um, I, because the rabbits are really hitting them hard, I kind of letting the weed cover come in there more and more because it kind of protects my other plants. So I've got a tomato right there and it's kind of hidden by some other stuff. Now this is um, uh, Cape Gooseberry or Ground Cherry. There is some Egyptian spinach over there that they don't, they don't, don't seem to, the rabbits and deer don't, haven't hit too bad and there's a little bit of there's four roselle hyssops in here. I'm sorry, roselle hibiscus. Um, this is our stinging nettle. Oh, and our pumpkin patch. So our pumpkins, our squash, mostly pumpkins because they're a little less affected by the squash beetles and vine borers. Um, there's a couple I need to harvest. There's one right there. And the rabbits and the deer are also, if you can see, getting everything kind of on the edge and kind of keeping it contained. Which... And then this is another example of a bed that's really, the voles are actually in the bed. So again, I'm letting the the weeds and there's clover in there and um, the celosia which they don't really the deer and the voles and the rabbits don't seem to eat the celosia at all so I kind of let it grow all around the peppers to hide the peppers and protect them from the rabbits and the deer and the um, it's kind of just hiding them I'm camouflaging them so that the those those um rabbits and deer aren't eating them so here's a rabbit because they were eating so in the past the rabbits never touched um, tomatoes or the deer never touched tomatoes this year they were chomping them so all our young ones got chomped uh, but they're not eating these right now because I think they're hidden and they're a little older now um, so I just continue to keep my fingers crossed and kind of let it grow ugly like that but well I, I think it's still beautiful anyway but um, it's messy and so here is my okra. This is the Okinawan red okra. Um, and it's, or Okinawan pink okra. And they're actually kind of smaller plants. In the past we grew, um, what was it? Coffee, giant coffee okra. And it was, a, they were just really tall plants. Uh, and I grew three of those, I started three of them towards the house and hopefully they'll get big because I don't want to let that go out because I looked and see and I couldn't find any seeds for them uh, on Baker Creek this year. Anyway, so here's the okra. And again, I'm kind of letting the celosia grow up and I cut it back when it gets too close because I almost, in some ways, I feel that it, um, it is affecting the growth of the other plants. So I have to make sure when they get them too close, I pull them up and I just lay them down and, you know, like chop and drop. I pull them up and leave them right by the plant to decompose and, and create um, nutrition for the plants. But so I've got a few peppers in here, a few, I believe, Tulsi's. Um, and some peppers in there. 
and the Okinawan uh, okra. I'm, yeah. And then here are my. This was. This turned out to be a mess. These are sunflowers because the rabbits and the deer killed all our sunflowers that we put. So originally I meant to put these in here just to get them past the young stage and then get them in the garden, out in the garden where they were a little bit too big for the rabbits, but then now the deer are eating them. So it's like a thumper bambi team. They're going out and they're just chomping things. So we ended up leaving in them in here, which is shading out my cucumbers, which didn't work out too well. Um, but you can see there's some cucumbers growing in between the sun, growing on the sunflowers. Um, wasn't the best ideal conditions. I have a pepper in there that's not getting enough sun to have peppers. I moved one out and it got killed out here, unfortunately. Uh, I did have an eggplant right here that's, um, it's gotten kind of whack. It's gotten attacked by flea beetles, but it's fine. But it grew several nice eggplants, which was all I needed. Um, Anyway, so cucumbers aren't looking great. It's also really hot. I started them later than I would have liked. Uh, they don't do as well when it gets super hot here. I should have used the Armenians. I didn't get any Armenian cucumbers, but I am getting all we really need. Um, this is our covered greens bed. And we still kind of the end of our kales here. There's a lot of hyssop in there as well, because we do the same thing. We kind of hide we kind of interplant different types of things in there to confuse the pests. It makes it harder for them to find. Um, okay, so I think that's going to be about it. I don't want to make this too long. I did want to show you our pawpaws, but maybe next week I'll show you the pawpaws up front. Um, but maybe an overview of kind of everything oh let me show you the compost bin too real quick so compost bin <laughs> uh, every year we have stuff growing out of the compost bin and this year we've got these tomatoes growing out of the compost bin and of course they're all volunteer they just come back every year same with the squash although I grew or the pumpkin and squash I grew planted three of them but there are plenty of them that have volunteered as well uh, and there's also mother wart there anyway I hope I'm going to play this and see if you see what I'm talking about. If you don't, I'll film it again. <laughs> anyway, have a great, uh, a great Sunday. Talk to y'all.